Hello Eagles and welcome back. So today is a double header. First, Sharpie insect drawings and then a really cool mono printing technique using a plastic bag. I like to look at a photograph, so I've just pulled up some pictures of insects here on my phone to give me a starting point for a design. So I'm going to pick this guy right here, and we're going to start at the head. All right, so to start our insect at the top of the page, we're going to make some circles for the eyes. Now, one thing that's true about insects is that they are the same on one side as the other. So they're mirror images from left to right. We've talked about bilateral symmetry in art class before and you probably have in science as well. I'm giving my guy eyes with a little space between here and then I'm going to connect those eye shapes with a line and then I'm going to make another line curving underneath to make his head. The next thing will be the thorax. So I'm going to make a curve shape kind of like a um, letter C on one side and we're doing the same on the other because he's a mirror image from one side to the other. I'm going to make a backward letter C over here. Now we want them to match and I'm seeing that those don't match very well so drawing with a sharpie can't erase but that's okay because there's other ways to fix it. We could draw over it and make it a thicker line we can add other lines. Color in spaces. Make up a story that your insect got in a fight and had an injury. And that's why he's lopsided, whatever works for you. Okay, that's good enough. Now, I'm going to connect the bottom edges of those curved shapes. My insect is definitely a little wonky. Okay, now the rest of his body is the abdomen and that's the biggest part. So the one that I'm looking at comes down to kind of a pointy shape. So I'm going to draw a line right down the middle of his body about as long as I want to make my insect. Maybe something like that. Starting at the side here, I'm going to draw a curving line that connects down here at the bottom.
I want to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so my insect has a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Now he needs legs. This particular one has legs that come out about right here that go out. And then up. And then out again. Now I want to do the same thing over here. It goes out. Let's see. And then up. And then out again. Something like that. Okay, now for the monoprint. Take your Ziploc baggie and cut it down the sides. You need to be able to open it up flat. Now, for your colors, I'd recommend maybe three or four. And you're going to color just on one half of your Ziploc baggie. You can apply the color however you want. I'm making mine kind of a bullseye with three colors, purple, blue, and green. Fill it in pretty solidly and then take your water mister bottle and you're going to spray the whole area that you just colored. Spray it lightly and watch what happens. You need to see the color starting to bead up a little bit to know you have enough water. If it starts making drips or puddles, you have too much. You may experiment maybe with some scraps before you use your bug print. That's what I did. But now I'm ready for my insect. So I'm going to lay him on the clean half of the bag. And this is the fun part. Fold the color right over on top and press it down. Yeah, it's so much fun. So the paper is going to grab that color right away. And when you peel it open, it will be almost dry, just a little damp. Set it aside and do another one. You can clean off your baggie with a Kleenex. This is the cleanest printing method imaginable. Nothing like what we've done in class with paint. So much cleaner. So this is great for in your house. Also, you can use this method in your journal. You would simply just uh, turn your journal page over on top of the plastic instead of putting the plastic on top of the drawing. That's so much fun. Okay, so now that you have the basic hang of it, experiment around a little. Maybe put your drawing underneath the plastic so you, you can see it through. That way you could place the color maybe more precisely where you want it. Same thing, spray it with water, but this time very carefully slide your drawing out from underneath and we're going to line it up and roll it down on top the color, just like that. Go ahead, give it a pat, flip it over, see what you got. 
Maybe you want to double print it now. You could layer up the colors. Wipe the plastic off, prepare the other side with some different colors, get it wet, and then lay it over. See what happens. The colors will look different than if you just drew with markers, layering them one on top of the other. I don't know why, but there it is. So it gives sort of a neat little iridescent appearance, I think. Um, also, if you miss some spots, if you have some bare places on your art you want to fill in, you can just print repeatedly until you get it filled in the way you like, or you can actually use your paper, kind of like a blotting paper. Use your art then to clean up the remaining ink that's on the plastic. Just dipping it in wherever you want to fill in, maybe with additional color, or fill in a bare spot. It's fun to play around with, very easy to clean up, very nice results, lots of fun. If you don't have a large Ziploc like I've been using, perfectly fine. Use what you have. This is a sandwich baggie. You just want to then cut down your paper to fit. So I made a collection of tiny bug drawings for this tiny bag. I'm going to lay the color down fairly heavy on one half of this sandwich baggie. So another great project using this technique would be to make a butterfly. You could cut out the shape of it, hang it in a window so that the sunlight would glow through, give you a very nice effect, almost like stained glass. You've probably noticed, depending on how much water, you have on your plastic, you get different effects. Less water, you could still see lines. More water, the colors blend more like watercolor paint. 